So, um, so Elise is our featured artist for the two weeks. She's new to the gallery, but is certainly well known as a longtime artist in Provincetown and Brooklyn, elsewhere, and now Wellfleet. So she's covering the map. So we're really happy to have Elise as part of the gallery. So just tell us something about yourself as an artist and as a teacher. Um, well, first, thank you, Robert and Wendy um, and Barbara Woodbury. Uh, you've been really incredible and really want to also thank the folks that have signed on for tonight. It's a such a weird time and um, and uh, and you know, we're trying to um, f forge new pathways to share our work and, and to talk about art and, and what it means to be creative. And thanks for stepping into this. Um, I um, am a multidisciplinary artist. I work making paintings um, on mylar and works on paper um, photography, although um, I don't really consider myself a photographer and I suspect that traditional photographers would look at my photographs and not, uh, not consider me a photographer either, perhaps. Um, I currently teach drawing to first year students at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, um, which is also my alma mater. It remains um, an incredible place to, to learn and to teach and to learn how to teach better. Um, uh, I, you know, work with first year students, as I said, teaching drawing, um, helping them, guiding them through a process that hopefully helps them understand that drawing can be many different things. It's not only making something look real or realistic, but um, can be used um, to help them understand um, their own vision and um and to guide them through their own agency um, using drawing and um, i've always been a drawer um i uh, i've always been a I, I although i studied painting at pratt um my work really kind of straddles the boundaries between drawing and painting i think um so that's my intro really um, the, the work that I'm showing here at the moment is a slice of some of the ways that I've been working these last few years, um, making paintings on mylar, which is an architect's material, um, archival, cellulose-based, as well as working with um, some photo transfers and drawing on top of those, um, and then some hand-coded photographs that our darkroom process, um, but are not um, traditional uh, photographs as such. Um, uh, I work, I, I don't know, Robert, should you, do you want to fire off some questions or guide yeah. the conversation? So, as you said, you don't think of yourself as a photographer. <laughs> there is a relationship between your drawings and photography. How do you use the photography? Um, well, both, uh, I use photography to both track and document where I've been um, and use it as source material often. Um, photography and drawing are both light-based medium. Um, my drawing works with, um, when I'm painting on mylar, Mylar doesn't have any surface light. Um, it requires, in order for the, the piece to be activated, it has to be mounted directly on um, a white background. I work on both sides of the mylar so that there's this um, kind of lovely delay that is both spatial and, and um, quite dynamic when you're working, looking at both what's drawn on the surface and then viewing what's drawn on the reverse side, the back of the drawing. Um, so the drawing or the painting gets activated once it's been mounted on a, a, on a wall and photography obviously also relies entirely on light to capture that sort of momentary image, whether it's using the shutter of a camera or when you're working in the dark room, um, using an enlarger in that split second to, to generate the, um, the work. I, 
I work from found um, photographs. I work from my own source photographs. Um, I, I create composite landscapes um, when I'm painting on mylar. Um, I, the process um, of, the, of working on mylar is kind of, for me, um, I, I may start with a source material and then add different um, elements from other types of other images that I have found or that I've sourced my own of my own photography. Um, and then the medium at a certain point starts to kind of drive the drawing um, and making a drawing or a painting making art as most of um, you all who are artists working artists will um, may also have experienced there's a it's a dialogue um you start off i start off with an idea um start the work the process of painting on mylar and even working on these photographs starts to um uh require a certain kind of a response so what i may have started off with thinking about originally has morphed through the process of working and giving and taking and adjusting and it's like being in a kind of dialogic um, process. So also as an artist, you don't use color, but the endless tones in your work kind of operate as color. Um, can you talk about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I think, I think part of the reason that I, I don't use color, well, I, I, I do use color, I think, and in, in some of this work, um, the, the color, if you will, are different types of ink. So sepia is used um, along with India ink in cooperation with Fister, which is a walnut, um, based ink but it's they're sort of earth tones and there is a they i use monochromatic color um when i use color um I, i'm not really that interested in color light but i'm really interested in tonal light and in um and i, I i'm almost thinking back on um and robert you and i i think we're talking about this about like what it was to learn um learn color theory when I was at Pratt and, and um, the, the, my, my professor will go unnamed, um, but I don't think he was that great at teaching color. And I, I think I just kind of learned how to stumble through color, never really could quite grasp it. And then realized that I didn't actually care about that kind of light that much anyway, but really just love um, kind of tonal light and, um, and atmospheric and, and, and what would be possible through atmosphere and um and uh working with with different kinds of uh media that would would kind of create a more atmospheric evocative quality um and uh yeah i don't, I don't know why I, I i just i try to use color and the color all looks the same to me um i don't think i can be colorblind because i'm not a man last time i checked but <laughs> I, I don't really register I, I just don't, I just don't get it. I don't think I get it. Maybe that's part of, could be that simple. Well, as someone who uses color in my work, these are extraordinarily colorful. Mm. <laughs> They're extraordinarily kind of, I mean, it's hard. It's not hard to see color in this, not in the ways we think about it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of, variations of tone as you said yes so you said in your statement my work explores the relationship between the natural and the constructed environment please say more about this why both um i am interested in different kinds of spaces and um i'm particularly interested in absence and in vacancy um, and, uh, and I think that what I notice in what I, well, often what I'm responding to 
is the relationship between the in the relationship between the natural world and the built world or even built elements like in this piece for example there's just a stairway that sort of is plopped into you know a hilly landscape um i'm i'm interested in the ways in which um nature can express um uh, can kind of subsume as in this piece um subsume architecture um, architecture can become kind of tangential to landscape and and exploring what that balance can look like um, through the painting through this particular painting process um, I'm also I'm just interested in vacancy and, and in absence and I think that the contrast between a built anything built within the landscape the built sort of suggests a people but um, or, or a human presence but um, often without the figure, um, it's the only thing that is suggestive of, um, of, of a human presence. It's just, it's primarily about absence, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, absence. But, but do you think the, the built environment encroaches on on the natural or there's a balance? I think, it, I think that often, often it does, but I think that um, what I try and show in some of these paintings is where one, you know, where one is trying to overwhelm the other and vice versa. You know, they're in, there's a kind of um, tense cooperation. Um, this, some of them I'm more, invested in in the architecture and in repeated motifs many others um the figure and ground and the environment start to really um kind of work on um work on uh, uh on one another um the architecture sometimes is devolving and evolving simultaneously um even with some of these photographs, um, there's a kind of robust physicality and a brushiness in some that comes from brushing on the emulsion um, in a way that is both painterly and, and somewhat gestural, which kind of becomes sort of atmospheric and um, degraded in some way, um, some more than others. So do you feel like one environment informs the other? I mean, do you feel like, or do you feel like, again, that they exist in some of these works as a kind of a balance or a, in harmony? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I feel like they, they exist in, in, a, in, a, in a kind of uneasy balance um, often. Um, and what I find with the with the paintings on mylar is that the fl the fluidity and the um, the kind of the unpredictability of the ink can really be nicely countered to the sort of super tight obsessive mark making that um, I just really enjoy. You know, I I am um, I, I get lost in the making and um, and uh, there's something extremely seductive about ink on mylar um, that I uh, that I I just really enjoy. I enjoy the the control versus the um, kind of the possibility for for happenstance um, and uh, an accident, frankly. And um, how do you make the selections of the sites that you you rep you make into images? Um, I'm struck by, I'm struck by, by the loneliness. There's something just that I intuit about, um, certain spaces and places that I, I have been to. Um, and, um, there's something about, um, you know, the Cape off season, for example, parts of Ireland, um, uh, for example, um, that there's a, there's a kind of tugging, a kind of loneliness that um, I can't really articulate, um, but, but that, that I'm just 
very drawn to. And there's also, I, I notice within the landscape, whether it's um, an urban landscape, none of the drawings that I've made of, of urban scapes are, are in this particular show, but um, that's, I guess, semi-urban. It's a composite of North Adams, Massachusetts. Um, but, but there's a kind of texture and tapestry that I can see that I, I just, I want to, I want to respond to, and um, and I, I just get sort of super turned on by it. Um, you know, there are certain things about the the making of the work that I think elude um, articulation. You know, there are certain things that are just very um, hard to articulate. But but it's just a sensation, really. It's just an intuition, a drawing. How does memory know. work in this? Pardon? How does memory work? Yeah. Um, I think for the, for me, um, you know, photography um, and photography is a way of capturing memory. And the, it also, there's a distancing quality to photography that I think I respond to. Um, um, the I'm trying to find ways in some of the photographs particularly, but I do think that there's an element of this, even in the paintings on Mylar, to kind of um, create a, an Im to, to create some kind of um, way of, of, of showing memory, showing what memory looks like. There's a, there's a kind of detachment that I really like. Um, uh, about working with photography and working from photographs as I make my paintings. And I think that there's just a kind of separation that is possible that, um, that in and of itself um, seems to be suggestive of, of memory, um, but, but particularly how photographs are used as mementos. Um, you think of postcards, it's a way of like, or, or snapshots of vacations. Um, it's a way of holding on to a moment of time. And um, I'm interested in the different ways that one can show that and, and what memory and recollection and remembrance might actually look like in a mind's eye or in my mind's eye, I should say. Um, Robert, we have a few questions and it's um, 725. So I just was wondering if you want to. No, I, 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 that was the last question, so. Oh, it's cool. Perfect. <laughs> so I know Dylan wrote, and so Dylan knew it. Had a question. Dylan. Um, no, I was supposed to be asking. It's actually Pam. My, Dylan's my son. I don't know how to switch users. <laughs> um, so I was asking, not being an artist myself and not really understanding the process, do you draw from images in your mind, live or from photographs? Um, all of the above, all of the above. Um, I assemble a lot of studies. Um, I shoot a lot of photographs. Sometimes I find photographs in print. Um, I have dossiers in my studio of like collections of Xeroxes and I'm, I'm as, as anyone who knows me, I'm ex especially my family, I'm extremely tech and digital averse. And um, Barbara Woodbury, you, you now know that about me as well. <laughs> so I, I, I'm a committed paper user. I'm one of the few people that actually buys the New York Times in paper. Um, so I, I kind of assemble a lot of different sources and in the and, and I love to just look through these dossiers or, or look through books and, you know, used books. I, I love perusing libraries and, and um, I, I just assemble images. And I also do work, um, I do plein air work, um, but um, mostly I, I shoot a lot of my own photographs and then I'll, um, I'll, I'll, you know, <laughs> print them out, I'll Xerox them, I'll tear them up, I'll reassemble them, I'll sort of notice that, um, oh, that Italian landscape looked 
somewhat similar in this way to something that I saw in Ireland. Where's that Xerox that, I, you know, and then I sift through, um, I sift through files and files. So um, it's a combination of different um, images that I, that I work with my own and then found as well. So if I could, I'm sorry, if I could just compound that. I'm, pretty, I'm familiar with your work um, and full disclosure, I'm Elisa's sister. Um, so <laughs> I, I'm just wondering, something that I've always noticed and wanted to ask you, and since I'll take this opportunity, is that um, a lot of your work represents like humans taking nature and then nature taking it back. Mm. And so I'm wondering if the photographs that you were talking about earlier as being sort of um, like memory keepers, mm -hmm. if you are sort of butting ahead against that as you you because your drawings are sort of decomposition of the photograph yeah i mean i i don't i don't I, I never really thought to tell you the truth that that um an objective of my work was to kind of um comment on you know nature conquering back and taking back um the ecology um but i do think about it um, and I, I, I kind of just notice it that that regardless of where we are, um, if it, it, nature has a way of just and uh, of just sort of self perpetuating and, and taking back. Yeah, you know, the, of course, um, I do notice it, but that's not I wouldn't say that my work is is exactly um, about uh, that specifically entirely. We have a question from Helen. Hi, Elise. Hey, Helen. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. You mentioned, and I didn't know this about your work, that you use both sides of the mylar. Yes. And I was yes. hoping you could um, tell us more about that and what, how do you choose what goes on the back? Um, and even in the images that we're seeing, if, if that is um, a strategy that you used in these particular cases. Yeah, um, I do. <laughs> I you you know mylar um Robert if you could scroll back to the front street the yeah um the mylar is translucent and um there's this lovely delay that happens that also sort of speaks to um the sensation of time when you are looking at marks or tone or, or wash on its verso. So for example, in this drawing, um, much of what is um, at the foreground, for example, on the lower right is, is um, done on the back, as I recall. Portions of the, of the architecture and the ground plane as the space recedes back, as it drops back towards the um, vanishing point, say, um, that too is done on the reverse. Um, it's, my decisions are based on really what the drawing starts to require, what it starts to tell me. Obviously, as a, as a, as a picture convention, um, the further something is, the further away we want something to appear, certain things happen, you know, uh, chroma drops off, value changes happen. And so where I want to exaggerate some sort of spatial uh, tension, I work with, um, I work on the back. Um, sometimes uh, just to shake things up, and to kind of, um, I guess, acknowledge the abstraction of the drawing and painting process on mylar, I'll foil that by working on the reverse um, a, on a portion of the drawing that, that normally one would expect to, to pull forward and, and be an extreme foreground. Um, in some of the other works, um, I don't have work up here, I think, that um, th th there's some of the drawings that I, I have done on mylar, I've used graphite. And um, that is, is kind of like really spatially intense. And um, at a certain point, I'm not sure whether I want one side or the other 
to be the front of the piece. Um, all I can say is that at a certain moment in the process of the, of the making of the work, um, particularly less so this because it's, it's quite representational, but um, it, it just becomes clear to me in an intuitive way, um, it just looks a little more correct. Um, so let's I want to interject and say that it's like a little after 730 and um, we still have a few questions. So um, three more questions. So anyone who wants to leave, I understand it's, um, they can leave, but whoever wants, Robert, is that cool to stay a little longer to answer those questions? I think so. This is incredibly Great. interesting. Yes, thank you. So, um, Mark Brennan? Yeah. Um, I, I may have arrived late and missed this, at least, but I noticed that a lot of your work that you've been doing printing-wise, not on the mylar, mm. has really, really strong textures. It seems to have uh, be woven materials. Uh, some of it is paper, some of it may even be fabric. And, and that creates a whole different kind of dynamic. And I wonder if you could talk about that a little. Yeah, you know, thanks, Mark. Um, the, I have, for many, many years, I had not been working on um, paper, actually. I had been only working on mylar. And um, I, um, I needed to shake the tree and, and I decided I would, um, I had been looking for a way to sort of suggest the breathiness of drawing. Um, and, 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 and just sort of the, the evanescence of an image, which was also tied into my interest in memory. So for example, in this um, piece, I was trying to, um, I've been trying to find a way to replicate the sort of sensation of, of, of someone blowing charcoal or graphite across the surface of a page and, and have it just be um, just just fall into place. Um, so I have amassed um, an unbelievable amount of paper. And um, I decided with, say, this piece um, to work with a combination of photo transfer um, and then work back into um, the piece with graphite or, or charcoal or colored pencils sometimes, but keeping it quite monochromatic. Um, the, the text, so I, I really have enjoyed um, reacquainting myself with the fiber, the physicality of paper. Um, and because I'm not really a trained printmaker at all, and um, because my press, as I was sharing with Robert a little bit earlier, is um, actually came from a laundromat um, that my close friend Arthur Cohen somehow acquired years and years ago and his wonderful wife um, let me have it after Arthur passed. It's, it's a laundry press basically. So there's, it, it, it crimps the paper and it makes it kind of a little bit rough and ready, but, but it, it, it does become like textural and its objectness is something that I'm, I just am completely seduced by. Um, I'm not working on fabric at all, um, but I am working with some, with a wide range of, of textured, like that, um, Robert, if you scroll backward um, to the Days Cottages or that piece, for example. Sorry, I can only go. No, that's okay. No, no. You're okay. Don't worry. There it is. Yeah, that one. Um, that's a, a paper that I bought, um, like, Honestly, it's probably 30 years ago at New York Central Supply. It's a Dutch paper called Zahn, and I can't find it anywhere. And it's, but it, it's, like a, it's like a slab of rust. It's like brown and heavy, and I just love it. it and it, it just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying um, its kind of pixelated quality, um, which also um, helps kind of disperse that creates a kind of airy etherealness to the image, even though this is a photograph, um, the texture of the paper is, is part of the work. It looks almost like canvas. Yes, yeah. I know. It's, it's, it's about as thick as cotton duck, I'll, I'll, 
It's amazing. Um, Mark Bernstein? Yeah, hi, Elise. Hey, um, hi. Um, I have some comments and um, some thoughts. Uh, I'm a black and white photographer, and I, uh, I get what you were saying about, um, about color. Um, I understand um, from my work, too, that color is more a distraction for me from the kind of direct statement that I want to make with my, with my photography. So I'm there with you. <laughs> we do speak a different language in terms of in terms of our photography, but nonetheless, um, I also appreciate the absence of space in your images and the absence of people as well. I've been to Ireland and I've walked those um, quiet and solitary and beautiful spaces, and I felt like an intruder. I felt like, um, as a human, I'm irrelevant, and I was, I was almost a guest there. I don't know if that's what you're trying to show in some of your work. Yeah, I, I mean, I do feel that way, um, and there are a number of Irish people I know online at the moment, um, uh, my husband and, 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 some, and some good friends. Um, but, you know, I, I almost feel about parts of Ireland the way I do in parts on, on parts of the um, the back shore, say the the and the, and the outer Cape. Um, I feel a little bit like I'm an interloper, you know, and um, and I'm aware of um, increasingly, and, and this may also be an element of becoming a middle aged person. Um, my lack of consequential, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the the lack of uh, we're here for such a short time, you know. Um, so, and, and that's become even um, kind of more, a more heightened awareness, um, you know, obviously in the last few months. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean, Mark, okay. definitely. And, and the other thing I wanted to ask you about is I get a sense, that, are you familiar with Art Young's work of trees? Uh, no, but I'm, I'm good, it's good to have another tree a tree reference. <laughs> Art, Art Young, um, your work reminds me very much of his as well. There's, um, there's almost a raw shock kind of um, sense to his um, depiction of trees. Mm -hmm. He also uses absence in a great way. There's a lot of open field and there's a silhouette quality to his work, which is kind of reminds me of, uh, of yours as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I see that in your work, and uh, 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 but with your work, as opposed to his, I get the sense of, when I looked at your work, I felt like I was kind of looking at, a, at fossilized um, relics. Is, th does that resonate with you at all, or, or is, does yeah. that enter into your work at all? Because that's the sense I get. Um. Well, what I'm responding to with the trees, um, I'm very interested in tree and branch structure, branching structure. <clears throat> and, um, uh, and there's also a strong, an opportunity to use that structure as a strong linear element, with, to incorporate strong linear elements to counter the kind of atmospheric, washy, puddly, places um in in the in the painting so um you know they the branches like for example in this piece and in some of the others uh, the trees do become kind of um uh, they become gestural they become animated and um they uh, uh so and they and they lend themselves to my hand in a really nice way. I just love drawing them. I love drawing the branching structure, and I I really like the the contrast between that sort of structure and the possibility of um, of this kind of more atmospheric ink possibility. Um, but but ambiguity then is not purposeful in in your depiction of trees. Is, is that what you Yeah, I wouldn't say, I don't think about that, but it's an okay. offhand, but but that's an interesting thing for me to start to think about, actually. Yeah. Um, 
So I think we should have our last question, our last question from Sasha. Hi, Elise. I, Hi, I, Sasha. Just, I just want to tell you they're beautiful and um, they're very contemporary, but they're also very sort of, um, there's a strong sense of sort of loss and sadness and the word decay comes into my mind. Yes. Um, and they write a little bit of sort of turn of the century or, you know, or mm. 19th century, uh, you know, when artists were painting ruins, um, there was sort of this nos nostalgia in the best sense. Yes. Anyway, I'll, I'll end it there. I, I know everybody, you know, we've, we've gone on too long, but thank you, Elise. No, thank you, Sasha. And, and, and thank you everyone for your kindness and, and your generous selves and in, in showing up. It's, um, I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's just marvelous. And, and to you all, I hope you get in to see the work and, and go into Mitloff, Maine in, in August. It'll be great to see the doors open. Yeah. Thank you all. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you, Elise. Appreciate it. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> thank you, guys. Hi, Ethan. <laughs> Thank you, Elise. Thanks, Ida. Hi, Elise. Thanks, all. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming and seeing and wonderful. I really appreciate it. Your gems. <laughs> Lovely Thank work. Thank you. Thank you. See you all very soon. Bye. Happy weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.